Hi, Tony DeWitt here, Missouri Appellate Attorney and a guy who likes to make the law make sense on YouTube. Today we are going to talk about the Brady List. No, the Brady List isn't that uh, little thing of nine squares that they used to play at the beginning of the Brady Bunch. Although, I guess if you had photographs you could make your own if you were a prosecutor. A Brady List is something that's put together by a prosecutor in order to conform to the dictates of Brady versus Maryland. So there are a number of different uh, cases that sort of deal with this issue of disclosure of exculpatory evidence. Brady versus Maryland was the first one in 1963, United States versus Giglio in 1972, U.S. v. Bagley in 85, Kyles v. Whitley, 1995, and Strickler v. Green in 1999. Now, all of these cases are essentially telling you the same thing. You, if you're a prosecutor, you have a duty to do justice. You don't have a duty to get a conviction. You have a duty to do justice, and by that, what you have to do is if you have exculpatory evidence in your possession, you have to turn it over. As I discussed last time in the uh, Brady in the Brady video that I did, you have a duty to disclose things that might lead a jury to conclude that someone else did this crime. For example, at the scene of an armed robbery, there is a footprint. It's a size nine footprint, and that you collect it. As, as the officer, you collect that footprint, you put it in your evidence bag, and then when you arrest your suspect on the basis of other evidence, you find out he wears a size 11 shoe. Well, that size 9 footprint is potentially exculpatory. It might be explained, but it's potentially exculpatory. It might lead someone to believe that someone else did the crime and left the footprint. So, even if you have a video that shows the suspect very clearly inside doing the robbery, you still have to basically turn over that exculpatory evidence, even if you feel it's not material, if you're the prosecutor. And that's what most prosecutors do. Now, United States versus Giglio, this is where the Supreme Court expanded on this Brady rule, and they said basically... This includes evidence that could be used to impeach a witness. So, given the fact that a police officer has a particular bias or may have been involved in a fight or perhaps has a drinking problem, all of these sorts of things, because they could affect the credibility of the witness, need to be disclosed. So that begs the question of what is impeachment evidence? And impeachment evidence is simply anything that calls into question the truth-telling ability of a witness. Now, it could be truth-telling ability with respect to their presence at the crime scene. For example, if you have a witness who swears on a stack of Bible that they saw a, a truck just like the defendant's truck leave the scene of the crime, and then you later learn that that individual was not where they claim to be. You have a video that doesn't show him in the position that he told you where he was. Well, that's potentially exculpatory. It's potentially ex impeachment evidence, and you need to turn that over. Hey, folks, please excuse the interruption, but let me ask you if you would, if you haven't already, please subscribe. And if you would, hit that like button and maybe even leave a comment that tells YouTube that this is a valuable video and they'll refer it to more people. It helps me out a lot and I appreciate it. Thank you. And with respect to police officers, they get put on a Brady list if there have been incidents in their past that call into question their truth-telling as a witness. For example, specific incidents of lying. This might very well be a situation where someone falsified time records. Uh, they made a clearly false statement in a police report. They, when they were asked to give information with respect to an internal affairs investigation, they gave false information. 
All of those are instances of lying, specific instances of false testimony. And here, it doesn't have to be lying. It can simply be incorrect. The fact that a police officer might have a problem with his color vision, where he says that he saw a red car go by, when in fact he's red, green, colorblind, then he doesn't see red particularly well. Well, again, you you might have an issue there with the their if they testify to that. It might not be intentionally lying, but it's still false testimony. And then, of course, anytime someone deliberately perjures themselves in court, um, and we have seen some instances of that in the past few years. There is an incidence right now in the YNW Melly trial. Detective Moretti said to Deputy Morrell, you need to say you were here when I served that search warrant. So there's a search warrant that gets served. And I'm like, what, what's going on? And then the next thing, he's asking this deputy to lie for him. And again, I'm like, I'm like this is like, I'm in the twilight. So I'm like, this can't really be happening. Deputy Gorell didn't say anything of any substance. I think he said, is there anything I'm needed for anymore or something like that. I don't remember if he said anything at all. It was just a very awkward moment. Do you say anything to Moretti? No, I don't say anything to Moretti. I leave the room. I'm done with the statement. That may very well reflect badly on the officers. It may need to be, it, may, it certainly should have been disclosed the first time. And from what I understand, it was not disclosed that first time. Is that true? No, what was intended to be conveyed was that Deputy Gorell, his response was flippant in nature. That that was the joking aspect of it. Okay, so if somebody from your office sends out a Brady notice in this case, not authorized by, authorized by you, correct? That is correct. And in that Brady notice that I just showed you, you're saying that there are incorrect statements of fact. That is correct. So if that is an incidence of false testimony, that's going to go onto a Brady list. Any instance of officer discipline, even if it doesn't involve false testimony, if an officer was disciplined for perhaps not showing up for a, a shift or doing something else that was against policy, all of that is going to need to be provided to the defense because it may give them grounds to impeach the witness at trial. If an officer has a bias against individuals or groups, you know, he's somebody who is frequently heard to comment that uh, all, and then fill in the blank, you know, black, Hispanic, Jewish, Catholic, whatever, are a particular way. If he shows a bias against an organized group of individuals, or even a disorganized group of individuals, if he shows a bias against somebody or, or individuals who are identifiable by some characteristic, like their race, religion, ethnic origin, that sort of thing, that needs to go in a Brady list. Citizen complaints if verified. He didn't listen to my complaint. He didn't make a report when he should have, that sort of thing. Prior lawsuits for excessive force. If an officer has been charged with excessive force, again, that's going to have to be turned over to the defense in a case. And, of course, anything that relates to a prior conviction. Now, you're probably wondering why in the world you would keep an officer with a prior conviction that reflected poorly on his honesty. And most states have a police officer standards and training division post that evaluates licensure for police officers. And indeed, those organizations can suspend or discipline their license to act as a peace officer, irrespective of whether the department that they're in provides them discipline or not. So there is, at least in most states, some way of checking to make sure that most of this stuff doesn't come up. There is also a nationwide Brady list of individuals who have been identified as officers who have had bad conduct, lying, false testimony, bias, citizen complaints, that sort of thing. 
and that's available and searchable on the internet. Now, whether it is in fact uh, accurate, I can't say. But it does provide defense attorneys with a way to look up somebody who might very well be a key witness in their trial to give them some opportunity to inquire of the prosecutor why they're not getting Brady information about that individual. So who is responsible for determining what goes into the Brady list or what who compiles the Brady list? It is the prosecutor and the police together. Because when it comes to a Brady violation, the prosecutor is ultimately responsible, but the prosecutor has to get information from the police. So if the police know something and they don't tell the prosecutor, the prosecutor's not home free. He will still be charged with that error later on. So it is in the prosecutor's best interest to ensure that all Brady information gets turned over in a case. Now, all of this, the Brady list and the Brady disclosures, all of this are done is done to ensure a criminal defendant's right to a fair trial and due process. It would be improper to deprive a defendant who may be at risk of his life or freedom of information that might rightfully tend to impeach an officer's credibility. Where the problem really manifests itself for the police officers is that not everything that's reported as a Brady violation or compiled into a Brady list is necessarily something that should go on there. For example, back when Kimberly Gardner was the prosecuting attorney in St. Louis City, she compiled a list of officers from whom she would not take cases. Now, these were fully certified officers and they were endorsed by the police department, but she wouldn't take them because she felt they were biased or she felt that they were not truthful. Unfortunately, that was her call. I think it was a bad call, but it was her call to make. And as a result, many people who were arrested by these officers got off scot-free because she refused to prosecute them, which in my way of thinking, is kind of a, an abandonment of your duty to protect the public as the prosecutor. But be that as it may, it's the prosecutor that compiles this list and eventually turns it over to the defendant. But because prosecutors can be just as biased, just as petty, just as ridiculous as any other man on the street, there also needs to be some process for essentially filing a grievance when an officer is placed onto a Brady list. Because unless there is a conviction and unless there is credible evidence that an officer really did do something that could create some level of bias, it's unfair to that police officer to have his career essentially terminated in most cases. I'm thinking here of the officer who was involved in the Michael Brown shooting in the St. Louis area several years ago. Um, he acted to save his life. He was cleared of any wrongdoing in that, but he essentially wound up losing his career as a police officer because anytime he discharged his firearm in the future, that's going to be something that comes up. And any officer, or I'm sorry, any agency that took him on as a police officer, would essentially be buying at least a probable chance of some kind of later liability if indeed he had to use his firearm you know, in self-defense. The world is not always fair. In fact, as I frequently told my children, expecting the world to be fair is like expecting the bull not to charge because you're a vegetarian. Bulls charge because bulls charge, and the world is unfair because the world is unfair. But if there is a way to make something fair, provide some kind of mechanism to fully and, and faithfully adjudicate whether or not there really is a Brady issue here, that should be determined and it should be used to protect officers. And because Although not all officers are good officers, most officers are good officers, and most officers are not going to jeopardize their career by testifying falsely. I have certainly 
uh, interviewed my fair share of police officers in cases involving both criminal matters and civil matters. And when an officer didn't know the answer to a question, he didn't make one up. In my experience, he said, I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to that. I didn't see that part, or I didn't witness that, or it would be speculation for me to say that. Most of them are very careful about telling the truth. And you would hope that they would do that in a criminal case too. And it's my belief that they most likely do. But again, there are people wearing the badge who don't do that, and that's why the Brady Rule and the Brady List exist. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Like, share, subscribe. If you have the opportunity today, go out of your way and do something nice for somebody. And then come down here and catch me back here at the beach again tomorrow. And if you've noticed, I've switched over to the, uh, to the fall beach because it's uh, starting to get a little cool down here. Have a great day, folks. We'll catch you down here next time. If you like this video, here are a few others you might try, and don't forget to subscribe. Have a terrific day, guys.